Hi, I'm Makiko Tsuda. This time I'm bringing you the show from the International House of Japan in Nopongi, Tokyo. The International House of Japan in Nopongi, Tokyo. The organization was established in 1952 to promote international cultural exchanges and intellectual cooperation. The I House building is registered as a tangible cultural property by the Japanese government. Held here on February 19th this year was the Japan Traditional Craft Revitalization Contest. The competition is aimed at discovering individuals and organizations with a unique vision and exceptional talent to breathe new life into traditional Japanese crafts. This year is the contest's third year. With me now is the director of Japan Craft 21, Steve Bimel. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you too. Steve Bimel has been a longtime student of Japanese culture and traditional arts and crafts, and is the founder of Japan Craft 21, a volunteer organization dedicated to supporting local artisans. So, uh, my first question is, um, would you tell me about the purpose of this contest? So, yes, most contests are for uh, to identify fine crafts or fine works of, of various craftspeople. Our contest is a little different. We are looking for the best idea to revitalize a craft genre for the 21st century. So, first of all, a person has to not only have a great idea, but they also have to be a great craftsperson. They have to have a great talent. Uh, they have to have passion, they have to have a vision for where they want to go. And these are the people we want to support, the people who are going to bring this craft tradition into the next generation. The top Ronnie Prize this year went to Oke, or wooden bucket craftsman, Chuji Nakagawa. Mr. Nakagawa has a workshop in Otsu City, Shiga Prefecture, on the banks of Lake Biwa, the largest lake in Japan. He primarily makes products such as rice containers and large sake cups. He invited us into his workshop. We usually make the smaller ones here. Traditional products include this, which is a tofu container. We also make uoke hot water containers used in baths. In the past, we mainly worked on items like these. He's working on something called a wooden leaf-shaped champagne cooler, which is one of the reasons our workshop became known. OK wooden buckets mostly had a round shape, but we started giving them shapes not used before, and that's one of our key features. This is a piece we're still working on, and it's an OK wooden bucket that's more of a big structure. The work that won the Ronnie Prize this year is this tea room, built using wooden bucket making techniques and is large enough to seat several people. As with the tea room, the basic structure of an OK wooden bucket is comprised of numerous wooden boards tied together. If the hoop is removed, it'll fall apart. And if tightened again, it'll regain its proper shape. Regardless of whether it's big or small, it's all about how the boards are put together. Our workshop specializes in small ones, but this time we took on the challenge of making one that's like a building and can accommodate people. This is the tea room built using okay-making techniques that won the Ronnie Prize this year. He says the field of wooden bucket making is also facing a decline in crafters in recent years with the prevalence of mass-produced plastic products. But there have also been new developments that offer hope for the future of the craft. 
Recently, we've been collaborating more with overseas designers. This unique thin and flat one is an example. An Italian designer asked if we could make a computer tray using OK techniques. I believe Japanese crafters have a sense, an aesthetic touch that's unique around the world. And going forward, we need to have a strong conviction that what we make is exceptional. Mr. Nakagawa was awarded prize money of over $30,000 for his project and will receive assistance from a special support team of experts for one year. One of the judges, washi paper designer Eriko Horiki, explains the reason he was chosen as the winner. Typically, when you think of a traditional craft, it's something that fits in your hand. But this time, he created an air, a space, invisible to the eye inside architecture. It was delightful to see what he's working to achieve. It's a work that I haven't seen until now. What was the impression of the attendees? I think is a really important step to ensuring that this heritage continues on for future generations. Program Japan Crafts is very important to keep these traditions alive, and tradition is a living thing. Receiving this award will motivate me to take on all kinds of challenges. How would you like these arts and crafts evolve in the future? Well, you know, there are many crafts that are not really applicable for the 21st century. There are many things that, that are being made that are maybe they're not quite um, used anymore. People, are, customs have changed. So we, we're looking for crafts which can be used by people in the 21st century. Do you actually see these things um, going overseas being used uh, for practical purposes? Uh, absolutely. The, in fact, if you know, Japan is a powerhouse of craftsmanship for the whole world. There are more crafts. When I say <clears throat> crafts, I mean master crafts, which are produced in Japan, probably more than the entire world put together. And these are things of extraordinary value and, and talent, and genius. And most of the world doesn't even know about it. And uh, absolutely, this is something that the whole world will know, will love if they find out about it, but at this point, really very few people really know about it. I see, so hopefully through your activities, they'll be promoted more and carried on. That's what we're hoping to do, yes.